Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Well, some morning, I do have two lights beaming in my face. In today's episode, we are going to create a modern minimalist website in 2022. So we're going to take it back to the basics and cover and build up on our essential skills using CSS, JavaScript and HTML. We're going to add animations, we're going to add an appointment system and just have a beautiful website that you can add to your portfolio. And before I get going, I do want to mention, if you want to upgrade your web development skills, I have courses covering the whole range, all the way from beginner, just kind of tinkering around with JavaScript and a little bit of static websites, all the way to creating full e-commerce websites. So anything related to that, check out in the description down below. There's a course for you. Let me know what you think and let's get into the video. Okay, let's get cracking. So we are using Visual Studio Code. If you want to get this, if you don't have it, and we're gonna start off completely from scratch. Well, almost from scratch. Uh, what we're gonna do is basically open a folder here. If we click on that little thing, and then we are just gonna head over and make a new folder somewhere here. Let's go to documents, testing rounds. That's perfect. And we're gonna call this uh, yeah, minimalist website. Perfect. Hit open on that and we are good to go. Now for the extensions for this, you won't need too much. So all we have to do is go here to extensions and make sure you get this one here, which is live server. Okay. It just allows us to see any changes that we're making to the website live and also Chrome to kind of see our website. Now, one thing I'm going to add, which we're going to find on the GitHub, so down below in the description, is the assets file, which is just like the pictures and the videos that we're going to use. So that's all going to be in here and also a font that I really like. Okay, so that's our assets. Perfect. So let's make our index.html file to get this up and started. Make sure it's not in the assets folder as well. So just click here without the assets being selected. We're going to call this index.html like that. Amazing. Perfect. Okay. We are ready to go. So we can close up this tab for now. And what we can do is hit shift one and then tab to generate a new template basically. So we're going to call this uh, mind and body. Okay. And hit save. Cool. I also have prettier install, which is an extension, which auto formats everything nicely for you. Okay. And now we can hit go live here, uh, which is going to open up a live server. Okay. Anyway, there we go. So we just had to change it here. It was hidden, but we got it working. Okay. So let's get started. So what we're going to do is just add the first page. We're going to style it up and then move on to the next one. Okay. So here in the body, what we're going to do is create the front page. So what I'm going to do is for each page, we're going to create a section. All right. Just to kind of categorize everything easily. And here we're going to have a nav inside of it, right? Cause we have the nav and then we have the text and the big image. So for this one, we're going to have the nav where we have our nav links. So we can say dot links and hit tab. And that's a wee shortcut that you can do to create a div with a class of links. And here we have some anchor tags. I'm going to leave these blank for now. So you can add a hashtag there. And then we're going to say our story. And I'm going to duplicate these twice and say practice and classes as well. Classes and hit save. Cool. So as you can see, it's right up there at the top. Perfect. Everything's working fine and dandy. Okay. So that's one. And then I also want to have the logo. So I'm going to add this out here, right? I'm going to make another div, um, with the class of logo. All right. So we're basically just grouping everything nicely together. That makes sense here. We're going to have an image. If we go over to assets, so dot slash, and we go assets and I believe it's logo dot SVG and hit save. Now it's white, so you're not going to be able to see it. We're going to add logo here as well as the alternative text. Maybe mind and body makes more sense. Uh, the actual logo title. And down here, I'm going to add a H1 saying mind and body as well. And hit save. All right. We're not going to see that, which is fine. Uh, 
we're just going to move on to the next one. Okay, cool. So we have that and we're going to start styling it a bit because it's quite hard to actually tell what's going on for now. Uh, but let's go down here, I'll make a bit more space. We don't need to see it as much now once we add our code. Let's go below the nav. All right, so we have our nav section. And then I'm going to have another div. I'm going to call this selling point or something like that. Uh, naming these classes is always a faff. So let your mind breathe. That's going to be our main text, big and bold. And then a H3 saying get unlimited access to yoga, Pilates. What's Pilates anyway? It's like an intense yoga or something. Meditation classes that fit. the way you feel. All right, that should be good. All right, there we go. I'm happy with that. Okay, and then what I want to do is down below here, we're going to have two buttons. Now one is going to be like learn more, maybe it's going to take you to a different part of the page, but the other one I wanted to basically redirect you to a website where you can basically book an appointment. All right, so down here, all right, below the H3, we can add another div with a class of CTAs, our call to actions or buttons. And here we're going to have a button with a class of CTA secondary, all right, the non important one. Um, and then we're going to say explore classes. I'll do a lowercase c. And then down here, we're going to have another button called button dot CTA main. All right. You can do that as well. Just by adding dot, it's going to add the class to it. And this is going to be called sign up today. Perfect. So we have our two buttons. We have our front page ready to go. So we can start styling it up now. So I'm just going to make a tad bit more space just so we can see it there. As you can see, it's quite nasty now, but that's all right. And we can start adding our CSS file. So go here, click the plus and say style.css. Cool. So now remember, we need to link it here. So let me make more space here, bring this down. What you can do is go right here, right below the title and say link and hit tab. All right, and then dot slash style.css. And that's gonna link the file. So now every style that we add here is gonna be nice and connected. Cool. So we can do a star symbol. And basically what this represents is it selects all the elements on your page, whether it's a header, whether it's a text, whether it's a button, it selects all of them, and then we can add some styling to it. So basically I like to do this where I remove all the margins and all the paddings and then just add it on my own. So I can say margin zero and padding zero. All right. So there you guys, you can see it gets rid of everything. And then I'm going to do box sizing border box. So what this does is when you add paddings, uh, it basically adds it on the inside of the element. So if I hover over like this with this button here, Right, as you can see, the blue part is the actual text that takes up the space. But if I add padding, I don't want this box to grow outwards. I want the padding to be added on the inside, just so I kind of know the sizing of everything and it doesn't change the height of it. All right, so that's why you have border box here. And I think that's it. What is this weird empty space here? Let's take a look. Oh, it's the logo. We have the logo here. We just cannot see it. So to actually see it for now, we can just grab the body and just add a different color to it. So we can say background light, not light blue, like a grayish. There we go. All right. So we can see everything now. That's cool. Perfect. So now what we can do is what we're going to do is just grab the HTML and body and add a height of 100% to it like that. Uh, just make sure sometimes you get these weird finicky problems where the height of the body and the HTML 
are different sizes. So let's just make sure it's everything's all right. Cool. So now what I want to do is add our colors and add our fonts as well. So what we're going to do is actually create variables that we can use throughout our CSS. So the way you can do that is using th this root like that. Okay. And this is the standard to do it. So you add this root pseudo element or whatever it's called. What do they call it? They don't call it anything. It's nothing. It's a fugazi. Um, and then you add a slash, not slash slash, it's a, like a normal, normal line, two normal lines, main line color like that. And then you add your color. So mine is F8B281, all right, that's one. And then we're gonna have a secondary color and this is gonna be 1B, 1B, 1B. All right, so now we can just call a variable and then we don't need to type this in ever again. So that's cool. To add a custom font, so remember we have a custom font here in our folder. The way you do it is you add a at font face like that. And here in the font family, you can give it any name you want. So I'm gonna call this Aragon Knight. And then you just set the URL here and navigate over to your assets. So dot slash assets, and it's this one, Stone Aragonite. Perfect, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and what else I want to do is on the body here, add an overflow. Uh, I guess we'll do it later uh, because I want to show you what it actually does. Cool. All right. So we are, we are doing pretty good right now. Let's see this. Maybe I'll make this a bit smaller. Let's see if the, that looks funny or not. That looks a bit too small. What if I make it bigger, like 125? That's nice and spacious. As you can see, the problem now is that this is overflowing uh, to the right there, but that's okay. We'll fix it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't want you to be panicking already, okay? Um, okay, so let's start off with the links. What I want to do is just grab the links for now and say display none. I just want to get rid of them. There we go, got rid of them. And the reason why I'm doing this is I think we're just gonna have the hamburger here. And then when we click on it, it's gonna animate those nav links in. So for now, just let's just get rid of it. And actually let's go back here to our index HTML and add back our hamburger. Okay, so the way we're gonna do that actually is let's navigate over to, let's navigate over to our assets and click on the burger. And I'm just gonna copy this SVG over. The reason why I'm doing this is because I also wanna animate the color. Uh, because what you can do is just go over here. Let me close this up to have a bit more space. What you can do theoretically is just add an image with a source and add your SVG like that. The problem is you cannot animate any of the properties if you do that. So if you wanna animate all the properties, then what we can do is just copy over the SVG like that. Cool. So now that we have our SVG, what we can also do is go to these individual lines and add a class of line to them. You're going to see why in a bit. So let's add a class of line to each and that's that. There it is. That's cool. That looks amazing. It doesn't, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. We have everything. Everything's good to go. So let's see what we want to do. I want to set some standard sizes for different things. So like for the H2, I want the font size to be like 2.5 rem. All right, there we go. Nice and big. Perfect. Um, and the reason why we're using rem, so you want to skip pixels because this basically um, adapts to different screen sizes. All right, so one rem is going to be 16 pixels uh, whatever the resolution is on different devices. So just use REMS. It's a better practice. What I also want to do is give more space in here for our H2. So I'm just going to increase the line height to 125%. As you can see, it just adds a bit more space there. I also want to add a bit of padding. So I'm going to say one REM and zero REM. So what this means is that it adds it on the top and bottom here, as you can see spacing, but it doesn't add it on the left and right. If you want it on the left and right as well, 
If I click on this, we can inspect it, see the green one, that's our spacing. If I want to add it all around, then we can just say one rem and get rid of this. And then it's going to add it everywhere. Cool. So that's nice. Now we can focus a bit on the logo. So what we can do is go down here, grab our logo, loho, logo, and add a display flex. So what display flex does, as you can see, is it takes all the children in this div and it aligns them one next to each other horizontally. So as you can see now, without display flex, they're, they go in a column, so one, like, it's like they fall one after the other. So logo, boop, 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 boop. But if we add display flex, it drops it right there next to it. So this applies to everything that's inside the div. So if we head over here, so we add a display flex on the logo. Let's find that logo. It's here. So basically all the content inside the logo is going to display, be displayed horizontally one next to each other. Cool. And after we add this, we have loads of customizability here we can do. If I want to drop everything in the middle here, I can do align items center. That's going to center everything inside that div. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. And now we can do logo and we can grab the H1. I'm just going to add a bit of margin left, 0.5 rem, just to push it a bit out like that. And I also want to change the font size, font, let's do the font family, to Argonite. Now in case there's any error or any problem and this font doesn't load, what we can do is add a comma and say sans serif. So in case this doesn't load up, there's always a backup and this sheriff always has your back. Cringy, okay. Logo image, let's grab that and we're going to say width. To your RAM. All right, we can just change this a bit smaller, and I think that looks pretty cool. Cool. Let's see what else do we need to do. I think this is too big as well, so let's go here and change the font size of this to one RAM. That's much better, much smaller. Maybe even smaller, we'll see. So let's do one RAM here. Is that too small? That looks too small. 1.5. That looks better. I like it like that. 1.5 RAM looks cool. Okay, actually we should switch this. Let me make sure it's at 100% just so we can get the correct scaling of this. 100. Ah, see that's quite small. Okay, perfect. Let's adjust this. I actually like it small like that. Perfect. So we got that going, which is pretty nice. We got rid of our links. Now this hamburger, as you can see, is still there awkwardly sitting. Um, okay, so let's see, let's grab, let's grab the H3 because I don't like the way this looks for now. So we can say, let's go here to our default stylings, say H3. And we can change the font, let's do font size and lower this to 1.25 rem. Actually, that made it bigger. Whatever, it's fine. Um, and then let's do a line height of 125%, just to give a bit more spacing in between those. Perfect, lovely. Okay, so that's great. Let's see what else we need to do. Um, what I want to do is this front page to basically be 100, 100, just like pick up the whatever screen size we have, all right? So basically, as soon as I start scrolling, the next page should come in. So the way we can do that is we can grab the front page, so front page, and we can add a min height of 100 VH, okay? Cool. Let me add a background color to this of light blue so you can see what's going on. And I'll remove this background color from here, like that. Okay, cool. That doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? I don't think we added any, any class name to this. So let's go back here to the section and add a class of front page. Let's save. So there we go, adding 100 VH here 
basically it takes up whatever the screen size is, the full height of it. As you can see, as soon as I start scrolling, uh, that's pretty much it. So if I want it to be half the screen, I can do 50 VH and that's always going to give me half. And what min height does compared to height is if I add more content in here, it's going to stretch to whatever height it needs to stretch. Whereas if you only have height, it's going to clip the content off. Okay, so I can show you that really quickly. So I can just go here. Uh, this is just, you don't need to follow along. Just a quick example. Let's say I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times like that. See, one more, two more. See, it just stretches out to whatever space it's necessary. But if I have just height here, then it's always going to keep that 50. See, boom, it cuts it off, which is not what we want. Okay, we can remove this. Get rid, get rid. Goodbye. Save. Perfect. All right, so I always want this to have 100 because the image is going to stretch all the way on top of it. Perfect. All right, we can remove these weird background colors as well. Uh, and what I want to do is also add a padding on this. So let's go here. And I want these to be on all the sections actually, so we can create it globally. So section, we're going to have a padding of 5%, just like that. So it's not all the way stuck in there. And that looks quite funny if it does. And let's remove these background colors as well. We're going to keep this dark just so we can see the logo for now, actually. But we're going to remove this, this blue here. Perfect. Okay, let's see what else do we need to do. So we have the links covered up. And what we can do is just the selling point here, selling point. We can add a, let's add a padding to it, a padding top of 25 VH. All right, bring it down just like that. We can actually do a margin top here. That's fine. Perfect. So that's kind of where I want it to be positioned. Uh, the font family should be the same here on this text to make it look cool. And I think the colors are all going to be white. So we can just go over to this section here, the front page section and say color white. There we go. Now that looks funny now, but that's all right. And then we can do selling point H3. And this is going to have a font family of, let's do sans serif for now, just like that. And then I also want to add a text shadow to all of these. So what we can do is say text shadow. And we can say zero pixels. So that's on the X axis, four pixels, which is on the Y. So we're pushing the shadow down. And this is going to be the blur, which is 12 pixels. You're going to see it now if I do black. So there it is, just like that. So if, so if I increase this blur, 24, as you can see, it's more faded out. 12 is fine. And what you can do is just go here and lower the opacity of it. So you can do RGBA. So 0, 0, 0, and the last value here means the opacity. Now we can just copy this over to the next one. So copy and paste it down here to the H3 and hit save. Cool. So now let's do our buttons. So we can do CTA, main, and then the color, we can use the variables that we made up there, upstairs. We can say var, main, color, like that. And see, it's orange now, really cool. And we can add a color of uh, var, var variable, secondary color. There we go. Perfect. So that's nice and dandy. And then for the CTA secondary, we can add a background color of var secondary color. There we go. And the color on this one is going to be white. Perfect. Now what I want to do is remove those borders and add some padding to these. So uh, what we can do is just do a padding, 0 0.5 rem, hit save, nice big button like that. And we can add a font size as well of 1 rem, just like that. You can copy this over or theoretically you can just make a button and apply it to both. I'm just going to copy it over now like that. Now this border as well is quite ugly. 
So that needs to be on both as well. So let's just do CTA's button. All right, so I'll grab both and just copy these properties over and then I can remove these and just apply it globally like that. Then I can do border here of none and I can do a border radius as well of 0.5 rem to give it a nice curve to it. Really cool. And then we can also add the shadow to it just to make it pop out a bit more. That actually adds it like that, which is not too nice actually. So what we can do is say box shadow and that adds it to the button like that. That's a bit too intense. That looks awful. Let's lower it down quite a bit and then we'll blur it out a bit more. 24, just very subtle. You can barely see it, but it's cool. Okay, so that's all nice and dandy. Uh, what I wanna do now is also align some of this text because it's quite, quite funny looking. Uh, I want this text to go basically in the middle. So, and this as well. So we can go here to, the, to this one and do a text align center and hit save. And that looks much nicer now. That's pretty cool. Now I wanna separate the buttons from here. So we can go here to just add another one called CTAs. I can do a margin top of two rem and hit save. There we go, that separates it a bit. And then for these buttons, we can add a margin of one rem and let's see how that looks. Perfect. Really cool. And then maybe we can increase the size of these paddings to one rem and see how that looks. There we go, much better, not much bigger. We like it nice and big. Cool. So now one more thing up here that we wanna do is uh, I want this to go here on the other end. So remember how we can do that is add display flex to the parent. So we can look here and see what contains the logo and then what contains the hamburger as well. So the nav, has a div with the logo and then the SVG as well. So we can go here to the nav. Do I have the nav selected? I don't think so. Let's go here to the nav and add a display flex to it. And hit save and boom, there we go. Now the nav pops up on, the, on that side of the screen. Now I wanna align it to the center so we can do align items center and now I want it to have basically an empty space in between here. So the way we can do that is just say justify content space between. Perfect. Lovely. So that's looking nice. That's pretty cool. What I also want to do is when I hover over this, I want it to be a cursor. So we can do a nav, let's just select the SVG and do a cursor pointer. All right, so now when we hover over it on desktop, it actually changes the cursor. Okay, I'm quite happy with this. The last step looks like it needs to be adding the background image. So how do we do that? So what we can do is go here to the top and just add it here in our front page, anywhere you want, because we're gonna position this absolute, which basically means, you're gonna see what it means. So let's go here and pick the hero image and hit save. And then for the alt text, we're gonna say uh, meditation, perfect. So as you can see now, it stretches it all the way out like that. It just doesn't look nice at all. Uh, we should probably also add a class to this so we can select it in our CSS. So let's head back here and we're gonna call this uh, hero. So let's add a class and set that equal to hero. Cool, so let's go back here and select it, hero. So basically now, as you can see, it puts the image on the top there and then the rest of the website follows along. So what I wanna do is basically pull this image out of this structure and just stick it in the back wherever I want it to. Um, so all you need to do is add a position absolute and that's it. And then you can specify where you want it to be. So if I do left zero, it's gonna perfectly position it uh, zero pixels from the screen, all right? So if I add 20 there, it's gonna leave 20 pixels gap on the left side. 
So we're going to say basically zero and then the top is going to be zero as well. All right. And I also want to make sure it fills up the whole screen here. So the way we can do that is basically add a width of 100%. So it fits on the screen like that. And then also modify the height of it. So we can say height, take up the whole screen. So 100 VH. That's all stretched out and it looks like a stick man. We don't want that. So the way you can fix it is you have this cool little property called object fit. And if you do cover, it basically zooms in on the image so it doesn't look distorted, which is really cool. And that's it. The problem though is we cannot see any of the content because basically the image is slapped on top of everything. So you can use Z index and say minus one to basically move that image behind all the text. Okay. And I mean, that's pretty much it. We have it all nice and sorted and that's looking pretty cool. So that's pretty much the front page cover there. So we can start adding content for the second page, which is going to have some videos. Um, so let's head back and you're going to see, we're going to animate these in a cool way. So basically let's go down here and we're going to add another section. So let's call this section dot classes and hit tab. All right. And here we're going to have a classes description. And in here, a H2 that's going to say classes tailored for you. And then here, a H3 saying it's time to heal your mind and body. Perfect. And now below this one, we're going to have a class, um, a div with a class of videos. And here we're going to have Pilates. We're going to have yoga and we're going to have, what is it? Meditation. Okay, cool. And here we're just going to fill them up with a bunch of header trees and we're going to say Pilates, H3 yoga and H3 meditation. And then we're just going to go and search for the videos here. So we're going to say video source, head over to assets and we're going to pick Pilates yoga for this one. And finally meditation. Perfect. Let's hit save. Let's see if they're here. They're all there. Perfect. All right. That's looking pretty good to me. And I think that's it for this section here. I'm, I don't think we're going to add anything else. We're just going to style it up nicely. So let's head over to our CSS. Let's scroll all the way down here. Okay. Let's see, where do we start? Well, let's start with uh, the color. So we're going to say color. Oh, we can remove this background now. Body background. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Oh, should be classes tailored for you. There we go. Okay. Back to the CSS, scroll all the way down. We're going to select our classes. The color is going to be our variable, which is secondary color. We're going to text align everything center. Nice and fancy. I love that. And then let's add the font family. We're going to do Argonite sans serif. That's looking pretty cool. Now these videos are stretching out a bit too much. So we're going to need to fix those as well. Let's grab the videos. All I want to do for now is let's do videos video. So I'm selecting each video. I'm going to add a width of hundred percent. All right. So they fit in the screen nicely like that. 
And then I want to add a little border radius as well, because I think that makes it look a bit fancier, just like that, to kind of keep the theme of everything else on the page. And then a margin top of one rem, just so they're not too stuck together. It gives a bit more spacing. Now what I want to do is grab this text and basically add it on top of the image. All right, so we learned that we can take a text or anything, any element we want, we can rip it out and we can position it on top using position absolute. Haven't we? Yes, we did. So let's do that. Videos H3. Grab that. We can do position absolute. Hit save. Super cool. Something's wrong because it does it to this one as well, I believe. Or maybe it doesn't. We'll see. Okay, so basically what I want to do is place it here, kind of like 10% up from the bottom. So if I do, let's change the color so we can see it a bit better. Var, we're going to say main color like that. So there it is, Pilates, as you can see, yoga and everything else. And I'm going to add a text shadow as well to this, so it pops out a bit more. 2 pixels, 12 pixels, black. And we're going to use this RGB -E, RGBA again, like that. Okay, so it's there, but I want it to be here. All right, so like I said, you can do bottom 10%. But why is it up here then? Well, if you just add position absolute, it basically puts it 10% from like the body's height. That's the default of it, right? It doesn't know like, oh, it needs to be in this element actually and not just on the body. So if you want to position something relative to an image, you, uh, or relative to another container or div, you want to go to that container and add a position relative to it. So in this case, for us, it's the meditation, comma, yoga and Pilates div, comma, Pilates. So we can grab all of these divs and add a position relative. So now the position absolute is going to behave according to those divs. So as you can see, boom, it's right there, 10% from the bottom relative to this div. Now I want to push it left 50% so it's nice and centered. But the problem is now, as you can see, it goes 50%. So it is 50%, but the text is long. So it's just going to keep going to the right here. So what we can do is take the actual size of the text and move that back 50% so it's perfectly in the middle. And the way you can do that is say transform, translate, minus 50% and minus 10%. So now it's perfectly 10% from the bottom here. And 50% and, uh, 50 centered horizontally. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe you can change the font size a bit on this. Like 2 rem. There we go. That's much nicer. That's pretty cool. That is looking pretty good to me. I think that's there's not much to it actually. So we can go on and move on to the to the last section and then we can start focusing on animating and optimizing our website for desktop as well. So let's head back here, scroll down to the bottom and we're going to add a new section called about. Make sure it's a section as well. So let's say section about. All right, here we're going to have a div called our story, hit tab, a h2 saying our story, dot dot dot. And I have a paragraph here with some random text. If you want to copy one over, feel free to do that. But here is mine. And then finally, after this div, I'm just going to add the image dot slash assets. It's called our story. So you can copy paste that. Make sure you also add the alternative text here. And that should be good to go. All right, as you can see, that stretches out a bit too much for now. So let's dial everything up nicely. So let's head over here. We're going to go and select the about. We're going to say color var secondary color. We're going to grab the about h2. 
we're gonna add a fan, font family of Argonite, comma, sans serif to it, just so it matches with everything else like this and this. Okay, so that's nice. And then we're gonna take our about P, so our paragraph, increase the line height on that. Let's do 150%. Perfect, and maybe the font size to 1.2 rem. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's grab our image. So about image, I'm gonna add a width of 100%. There we go, so it fits in nicely like that. And just a bit of margin to push it down from the text. Margin top, two rem. So that's looking pretty good as well. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that. I guess on mobile, we can text align this to the center to kind of keep everything nice and consistent. So let's just go here and do a text align center. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. So now we can start focusing on animations and optimizing some of the things here on mobile because these videos are not playing right now. One more thing I should do is actually head over to Google Fonts and change that sans serif to, uh, I think I picked Roboto. So here it is, Roboto. I have it selected and I picked a font of font weight of 400 and 700. I think I only used 700. Uh, but feel free to experiment. So copy this top portion here and paste it on top here below, uh, above the style CSS. Paste that in there, and then you can copy this bottom portion and just add it to your body. So body, paste that in there, and that should do it. So there we go, we have nice Poppins font across our whole website. That looks really cool. Perfect. Okay, what did I want to do? Oh, the hamburger animation. Okay, so basically what we want to do is whenever I click on this, I want to basically toggle out our nav section. So remember we made our nav, but we added a display none to it. So let's, let's bring this back and see what we have. So as you can see, if I bring it back, it's, it's in here but I wanna remove it from the context. So I'm gonna add a position absolute like that. Let's add a background of white to it. There we go. I'm gonna add a width of 100 and a height of 100 as well. Actually heights, let's do 100 VH. There we go. And then I'm gonna say left zero top zero, so it's perfectly on top, covering up our whole screen. That looks really cool. Okay, so now that we added, um, so this one has a display flex on it, I believe, or maybe it doesn't, display flex, now it does, uh, but I want the content to actually go in a column. So you can modify that by just doing flex direction column. Perfect, and now what I can do is align the items in the center and I can do a justify content space evenly to put them down like that. So that looks pretty cool. I want the color to be white, uh, black, color black. So if this doesn't work, then we need to go on links and is it an A tag? Yeah, so links A, and then do color, var, let's do secondary color, and let's increase the font size of this to 3 rem and see how that looks. A bit too big, maybe a bit too big, let's do two. Cool, so there we go. But I want this to be hidden, I don't want it to be on the screen, only when the burger gets clicked, that's when I want it to pop up. So the way we can do that is we can just go here to the links and basically push it to the right side on the screen. So we can do transform, translate X. 
Okay, so if I do 30%, it's gonna move it 30% that way. 100% is gonna perfectly move it off screen. See, it's right there. But I don't want the user to be able to scroll like that because that's quite awful. So what we can do is go to the top and add an overflow X of hidden. So it's basically gonna cut everything off right here. Okay, so as you can see, adding overflow X hidden, sometimes it gets blocked in this view for some reason. So let's go out of it. As you can see, I can scroll to the left or right, uh, which is perfect. So it's hidden. Uh, so now when I click on this, as you can see, we have the cursor pointer. I want to open that panel up. So we need to add some JavaScript to this. So let's head over here and make a new file called script.js. Perfect. Now let's link it up. So let's go over to our index.html, scroll down to the, to the bottom here, right above the body, and we can add a script. Oops, script with a source of dot slash script.js. And I'm also gonna add two packages here. If you go over to cdn.js, gsap, uh, this is gonna help us animate things very easily. So this is my favorite package. And we're gonna copy over gsap min, add it on top here, and also get a scroll, where is it? Scroll trigger, which is gonna let us do scroll animations. So I'm gonna paste that below as well. Okay, so head over to cdnjs gsap and get these two inserted here. That sounds weird, insert them right above your body. Okay, done. So now what we can do is head over here. Let me close this up actually. It's just taking up so much space. Um, ba, 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 ba. Can I just slide this? Inspect, close, close the inspection. I'm done inspecting. Surely you'd be able to slide it anyway. Um, okay. So let's head over here. And what I wanna do is basically select the burger. So I'm gonna say cause burger. And the way you can do that is saying document query selector. And you can pass in the nav SVG like that. All right, so now we selected this burger. And now what we can do is on the burger, oof, what is that? A big end burger dot add event listener and here we can say click so basically and then we're doing an arrow function like that all right so basically what we're saying is every time a user clicks run this code that is inside this function so in between these curly brackets okay so what we can do here is if i say alert hello so now every time we click on this, it's gonna pop up an alert message. Cool. How the hell do you close this thing? Isn't it like F something? I don't know how to do it on Mac. I'm too used to doing it on Windows. Uh, I'll refresh the page. Ah, oh, keeps it. Damn it. <laughs> okay, anyway. So what we wanna do is use GSAP here Basically what I want to do is say if the burger dot class list, uh, let's do this. Every time we click on the burger, we'll add a class of active. And if it's active, we'll open up the drawer. And if it's not active, we'll close it. So what we can do is say burger class list dot toggle active. All right, so now every time I click on this, if I click on click on it once, it adds the class of active. If I click on it again, it removes it. So if I go here, you're gonna see it. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Where is it? That's here somewhere. See, class list active. And then click it again. See, it toggles it basically. So now I can just add a little if statement up here saying if the burger class list contains active then I wanna do something with this. Else, do something else. <laughs> so basically, if it doesn't have it, 
then I want it to pop into view, right? So I can say GSAP to, and the first argument here is gonna select whatever you wanna move. In this case, it's gonna be the links tab, right? So you can say dot links, so that's the element. And I wanna move this at the curly brackets, and this is used for adding the properties in to 0%, all right? So translate it back to 0%. And here, gsap2, I want to take the links again, so dot links, I want it to go back to x 100%, all right? So this is basically the transform translate that we're doing it on the links, where is it? It's this here, all right? And gsap is just x. All right, so that's basically how gsap works. You say gsap2, First argument is gonna be your selection and what do you wanna do with it? Animate it, right? X 100. You can change the opacity here as well and basically all of your CSS stylings you can do in here. Let's see, it does it work. So click, oh, it opens up, that's cool. But the problem is I cannot click on it again because it's basically this pops out and the, the burger is underneath it. So if you remember, we can just add a Z index to basically pop it out in front. Where is it? Here, let's do a Z index of like 10. All right, so it's always gonna be on top. There we go. Amazing. Uh, the only problem is that it's white, so we can change the color as well here to black. And the way you can do that is say GSAP to, and we're gonna grab each line and do stroke, to white. Cool. And then here, GSAP2, all the lines are gonna go back to stroke black. And we're using stroke and not color because this is an SVG line. Let's see, does that work? Yes, it does. That's pretty cool. I guess you could change like, like it goes black and then maybe you can change the size of these as well. So comma, you can do width of one rem, I don't know, just kind of, that doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Okay, I think it's because it's an SVG. Uh, so you need to modify these values here, the X2, I believe. I'm not sure how it is in GSAP. Is it at X2? Maybe not. I guess that doesn't work. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, maybe a pixel value works on this. Or maybe uh, an easy one that we can do is uh, do the size of it and make it a bit smaller. Just to kind of illustrate the it's been clicked. That doesn't work either. Okay, we'll just keep it like that. That's fine. But then it works, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we can do here. Oh, it would be cool to have kind of like an animation to these as well. So when it opens up, basically I want this to go from opacity zero to opacity one and have the sliding up effect. So what we can also do is do a GSAP from two. So you can specify the starting point to the ending point. So I can do links A, all right, so the actual anchor tags. And I want it to go from opacity zero and then you can do another curly bracket where you specify it to go to opacity one. Okay, so now when I click on it, it might be a bit too fast, but it goes from opacity zero to opacity one. Uh, what we can do is actually go here and add a delay to this. So let's say delay 0 0.5. See, there we go. Perfect. But I, what we can also do, since these all have the same class names, we can add a stagger to it as well. Stagger 0 0.25. Now take a look at this. Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And what we can also do is move it a bit, like along the y-axis. So I can say from y0, move it to y20, like that. Let's take a look. That's pretty cool. Maybe the delay is a bit too big. So 25 should be quite nice. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm happy with that. That looks good. Okay, and that's pretty much it. We have our nav up and going. 
I like it. What you can also do, see, because we can scroll now, which makes it quite weird. We can disable the scroll bar as well. So when it's opened, so let's see here, all right, when it's black, we basically want to disable the scrolling. So we can say GSAP set, and we can grab the body and do overflow. Hidden. So let's see, does that work? Look at that, we cannot scroll anymore. So that's perfect. They have to click it to actually be able to scroll again. Now it's locked because we're not setting it back. But let's copy this over from here. Uh, up here. And the if statement, right? And we'll do auto here. Perfect. Let's refresh, click, perfect, click again. But oh, look at that. Now it's a problem because this shows up. So it's not auto, we'll do overflow X. Overflow, I think we need to do auto and then set overflow X. GSAP set, let's try that. Body, overflow. X to hidden. I think that's the way. Let's see if that works. Yeah, perfect. That does work. There we go. So that's pretty cool. All right, we have our hamburger nicely animating. Now here's a cool little thing I want to do. I want, like whenever I scroll, I want these to slowly fade in. How can we do that? Really simple, actually. We can go down here at the bottom. We can grab each videos and use a utility class in GSAP, so GSAP utils to array dot video. So it's gonna add all of these videos in an array. And now what we can do is loop over each one of them and add a trigger to them. I also wanna set GSAP dot set each videos to start off with an opacity of zero. Okay, like that. So now let's take a look. Why doesn't that work? I must have messed something up. Do a refresh. It should set it to zero. Hmm. Okay, let's keep it like this for now and we'll take a look. I don't think I added a class to these actually. Let's head over here. Oh yeah, let's add a class of video to each of these. Perfect. There we go, now they're gone. Perfect. Okay, so now that they're all hidden, all we can do is loop over each video. So we can say video, uh, videos for each, for each video, we can run an arrow function like that. I can use that scroll trigger plugin to create a trigger. So our trigger is going to be video. So every time we scroll and we hit the video, it's going to do something. Now we can specify a starting and ending position as well. So in this case, it's going to be top center. Make sure you don't use the comma here. You're going to see what this is in the bed. And then end is going to be bottom center. And we're going to say markers through so we can see what's going on there. So as you can see, we have a marker here on the screen. And there's the starting position of the video and there's the end. Perfect. So you can basically specify where the starting and ending is. You can do bottom center or you can specify a percentage as well, whatever you want. And then here we can do on enter. It's basically a function here that we can run that says GSAP to video opacity one. All right, so every time we scroll into view, boop, it starts fading in. Boop, and boom. Okay, perfect. I think I need to refresh this a bit because it is acting a bit funky now. Let's refresh this. If you have a problem and it's not 
being nice with you, just empty your cache and do a hard reload. Let's see now. See, it is funny now. Let's do another refresh on this. There we go. Now it puts it properly. There we go. That's perfect. So as you can see, that's the start there and the end right at the bottom. If you want it, you can do center center here and that's going to put it straight in the middle. See, so there's the end now. Okay, cool. Well, all we care about is the top portion to hit for now. And what I want to do now is play this video as well. So video dot play. So let's see if that works. So I scroll in as soon as I hit start, it should play the video, but it doesn't. Why? Because Chrome rules are funny and they won't allow you to play a video unless it's muted. So we need to go back to our index HTML and go to video and say muted. And also we're going to do a loop as well on it. So muted loop, muted loop. Let's say if, let's see, there we go. It's playing now. Now, another thing I want to do, let's do it again. Let's refresh this. There we go. Another thing I want to do is stop them playing when they're out of view. So it's really simple. All we need to do is go down here and add three more functions. I'm going to copy them over and you can paste them in. It's called on enter back. So whenever we go back into view, it's going to play. On leave, it's going to pause, but on leave back, it's going to pause again. So boof, see, but when we hit the leave marker, it's going to stop. Let me refresh that again. I'm not sure why it's being finicky. So start, see, when it gets to the end marker, it's going to stop playing. But when we go back to it, it's going to start playing again. So that's on leave back and on enter back. So we're entering back. We want to play it again. Otherwise it wouldn't work. So there we go. Look at that. How cool is that? It's kind of like TikTok in a way. Amazing. Perfect. So there we go. That's our little animations all covered up. And finally, if we want to make this desktop friendly a little bit, what we can do is head over to our style.css, scroll down to the bottom, just some basic ones I want to add. Um, Let's go here and the way we can do that is say on media screen and if our min width is bigger than 768 pixels, which is the standard, we can do a body. We'll increase the padding to 10% for the body. Our videos are going to have a display flex. So let's see how that looks. So let's make this a bit bigger. So there we go. See, there's more space now. These are displayed flex, but what I want to do is add a gap in between them. Let's do two rem. There we go for the gap and our about page. We can leave it like that, or we can grab it and add a display flex to this as well to put them side by side. We'll add a gap to it as well. Let's do five rem and then we'll do justify content space in between. So just like that, but there's not enough space now. And what I want to do is make this image smaller as well. So about image, the width is just ginormous. So let's do 50 on that. That's looking good. And then we can do a about, uh, I think that should look quite fine actually. So let's zoom out. What am I doing? Let's make this a bit bigger. There we go. So that looks pretty cool now. Optimize. You can text align this to this side as well, actually. Um, so that would be, what did I do here? Goodness gracious. Oh no. <laughs> uh, close. There we go. And then close this one as well. Close all. Perfect. Um, yeah, let me just get to the size that's above 760 like that. Yeah, like that. See, that looks pretty good like that, but you can do, I'm not sure which one is text aligned. Uh, let's inspect it quickly. 
what is that like about h2 so about h2 and we can do a text align to the start there we go so it's nicely aligned oh and lastly what i want to do is when we click on this button i want it to take us over to a appointment kind of thing so we can use calendar for this one calendar and this allows us to customize it nicely uh, they take payments as well uh, it syncs up with your google calendars or apple calendars it's a really cool website you can try the live demo here we're just going to do a basic one so hit on get started uh, you can log in with your google click on there let's complete this out I forgot my password perfect there we go and you can add a new booking page here you can add your title you can change the image here you want it to display uh, the meeting location timing all of these i think i kind of left everything by default um, and then you have notifications through email as well i believe that's a paid feature uh, but after you do all of this and set it up you can publish it and let me just go back here because i did one and then you can grab a link here which you can copy and add it to your button so in this case i think it's a it's a button but you can change it to like a href an anchor tag or yeah let's let's do that for now actually uh bu -bu 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 here so what i should have done here actually for the sign up is add an anchor tag in here like that and the href is going to take us over to that calendar website and then i'll just copy this over and say sign up today i believe the styling is going to be a bit messed up here on that um, but we can quickly change it to go to cta main here we go and say cta main a oops uh, cta main we'll remove the text decoration none why is that not working a tag there we go and then the color can be our var secondary color there we go so now when we click on this it's going to head us over to our appointment website where we can pick a time a name an email confirm and then we have a booking completed. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a subscribe down below. And let me, let, me, let me know what you think of the project. Leave it in the comments. Awful. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But here's other, some other videos that you can check out now. And until next time, take care.